Hello everyone. Um, so this talk is about uh, ClipOS, uh, Linux distro we released uh, last week, but we worked on it uh, for, for a long time. Um, so we'll focus the talk on some canal improvements related to security, but there's a lot of things to talk about ClipOS. Uh, first, this is Timothée Ravier, and I'm Michael Salin. We both work at the French Network and Information Security Agency. So in a nutshell, um, our goal or mission is to improve defenses um, for the public and private sector too. Um, and as a side note, we are definitely not an intelligence agency. Um, so let's first talk about the um, So the clip was until now uh, only mainly developed by the agency. Uh, it was mainly uh, available uh, for our own use, uh, but uh, last week we released it on uh, open source on GitHub. So you can find two versions, uh, version 4, uh, which is there for references. And you can find a lot of uh, patches and um, uh, interesting security features. And the current developed version is version 5, and, but it's still in alpha. Um, so ClipOS wants to, well, main goal is to get and harden operating system, which means something which is resilient to different kind of attacks. Um, we use the Linux kernel and um, mainly Linux related user space. Uh, we use a lot of uh, confined services in different kind of containers. And a uh, really important point is that we do not have a root account, uh, but instead we have multiple um, roles, which are uh, the admin, audit, and update roles. So in a nutshell, uh, the admin role is dedicated to administrative tasks on the machine. So it is dedicated to configure the machine, but uh, it is not allowed to access sensitive data, especially not data uh, from other users. And it cannot, uh, it is not able to um, tamper with the system. And uh, well, the system um, will still uh, uh, stay secure even if the administrator wants to do uh, not good things. The audit role is dedicated to gather some information from uh, the system. So it's mainly uh, system logs. And the update role is dedicated to uh, install application um, and configure the update mechanism. But it is not allowed to install anything, only a wide list of application. The update mechanism is pretty similar to Android and Chrome OS. Um, so it is based on an A, B model. So it, pre it is pretty resilient. The other important point about ClipOS it is, uh, is that it is built uh, to handle multi-level security. Um, so the way we implement this is with two different levels, two different environments for the end user, a low level and a high level. So it follows the principle of um, well, the Bell Lapadula model. In a nutshell, um, well, the user can use either the high or low level. Uh, but can only transfer data from the low uh, to the high level in clear text. Um, and to transfer data from the high to the low level, this is only allowed if this data is encrypted. Um, the main difference um, between the high and the low level is that uh, the high level can only access the network through a dedicated VPN. And because it is multi-level, uh, when you want to plug a device, uh, for example, a USB stick, uh, webcam, uh, scanner, and so on, uh, well, this, this device is dedicated to one level at a time. Um, to give you an overview, so this is um, a clip uh, workstation. Um, so here I, I am in the low level, but I can switch to the high level here. So I really need to click uh, on the left panel here. You can see that the panel changed the color. So 
it helps the user know uh, on which level it is working on. Um, and for example, there's also uh, well, multiple administrative tasks which are av available through graphic user interfaces. Uh, for example, this one uh, allows the user to choose if the device should be usable by the high or the low level. So you can change and apply it. Okay, so you may wonder, well, this system may be quite similar to the system, like, for example, CubeOS. Indeed, we share, uh, well, uh, multiple common goals. Um, but the thing is, CubeOS um, development started uh, some years before Cubes, so obviously we couldn't use it. Um, we have some common goals, but also some common differences. Uh, the main goal of CubeOS is to target non-expert users, so um, we, we, want, we want this workstation to be usable um, for office tasks. Uh, we want it to be usable following the Bell and Apple model, which means we have two and mainly two levels for the user, which is kind of uh, easier to understand and to use. And we favor def, um, a defense dev approach, which means that we want every layer of the system to be hardened, uh, secure as much, much as possible, and to add multiple layers of security. Um, from a technical point of view, uh, Cubes is mainly based on an hypervisor, uh, currently Xen. Um, and ClipOS only rely on the Linux kernel isolation primitives, but we also add um, multiple features. Um, so it is important to um, understand that these different techniques, um, for example, using the Linux kernel is um, well, can help to have a more fine-grade access control because the kernel knows about files, about sockets, or even about processes. So we can enforce an access control on these kind of objects. Um, as we saw before, um, we do not have a usable root account, but multiple rules. We do not want uh, a user to be able to, um, well, to harm the system in any way. Okay, so here's a basic um, overview of the architecture of Clip. Uh, so we we'll, first we rely on the hardware. Uh, we use the Linux scanner with some improvements. And the main uh, part of the system, which is called here the core of the system, um, is dedicated to handle updates and critical um, services. Uh, like, uh, for, for example, um, some specific administration administrative tasks. And we try to push as much as possible a lot of services, uh, either system services or um, level uh, user levels, in a lot of different containers, which are dedicated to these uh, specific services and processes. Uh, now let's dip uh, more in the, some of interesting ClipOS for features. Um, ClipOS is built thanks to the Gen2 addend uh, Linux distro. So it allows us to uh, use an addend toolchain to build a lot of uh, user space um, uh, binaries um, in a secure way. And it also enables us to uh, easily patch multiple applications, even the kernel, uh, in a flexible way. Uh, we also used Linux vServer. Um, Linux vServer is a kernel patch, um, so it's maybe 15 years old, something like that. Um, it mainly used nowadays Linux namespaces, so as you may know with common uh, container. Um, but it also adds uh, multiple security constraints, which are pretty useful, especially for multi-level security. Um, for example, we, uh, we are able to identify um, containers by their uh, unique identifier, which are called XID for the server, or NID for network identifier. Uh, for ClipOS, 
Four, we also rely on uh, kernel hardening uh, provided by uh, GSQT patch, the so GSQ patch and packs, uh, which allow to um, improve the protection on the kernel memory and user space memory, as well as some other interesting features. Um, it also brings some interesting properties to help secure user space and harden it. For example, an hardened shoot or even a trusted pass execution feature. And on top of that, we also wrote our own LSM, our own uh, Linux security module. Um, so the idea here is not to uh, bring something too new, but to try to improve uh, what already exists in the Linux kernel uh, to complement the Linux permission model. We also leverage uh, Linux vServer and GS security features uh, in a consistent way. One really important principle we try to follow uh, in every part of the system is the write XOR execute policy. So the idea is, for example, if a, if a user uh, downloads a binary, so he can write it uh, on the partition on his um, uh, home directory, but he should not be ex able to execute it. So this helps avoid arbitrary code execution and more importantly, um, persistent attacks. So this is implemented on the memory parts, thanks to uh, packs mainly, which allow to deny any writable memory to be executable. It is also implemented uh, thanks to our LSM uh, with a feature called devctl, which enforces the same principle on uh, mass storage devices and these properties, these constraints on the, on the devices are then propagated to mount points. On the mount points, we can then use uh, mount options to enforce either a read-only uh, mount point or uh, no exec one. And what we also bring here is a new flag that we um, uh, added in the kernel, uh, which is used for open syscalls, which is called omegzec, and it basically means that you want to open something which should be on an executable mount point. So this is user, uh, useful to uh, patch script interpreters uh, like Python and Perl to help them to enforce the right or execute policy as well. So here is a, a, a simple diagram. Uh, you can see a Python interpreter at the, at the right of the screen, um, which can um, either try to open a Python script with a special flag here. So if the open succeed, then the Python interpreter can uh, follow his execution flow and execute or interpret the script. But if this open return an e-access, then the Python interpreter knows that the script should not be executable or interpreted. Um, we said that we use a lot of um, contain containers in clip. Um, so it's kind of hardened containers because we use uh, Linux namespaces, of course, but also other properties, uh, which are, for example, provided by vServer. Uh, for example, uh, vServer provides an admin and a watch concepts uh, that we tied on uh, our admin and audit role. Uh, we also have two new capability bonding sets, uh, one, sh one which is um, dedicated to the root user, or uh, in a shell, every process is launched by the kernel, and another capability bonding set, which is dedicated um, per container. This way, we can have a really fine grade um, capability set per container. And we also, inside our containers, um, also use Shroot, but not simple Linux Shroot, hardened ones. So this really had a new layer of security, which follow our principle 
um, of defense in depth. Um, to handle this container, well, first, each container is built from scratch uh, with a tailored file system, uh, file system uh, layout, which are, uh, each of them are de um, dedicated to uh, services, uh, specific services. And uh, this container can be managed uh, with, uh, for example, um, a homemade tool called VSCTL. Um, but this can also be uh, used thanks to a homemade library, which may be, for example, really useful if you want to patch a service and um, enable this service to um, um, well, jail itself in a safe way. Um, about the permission model, so ClipLSM bring a new feature, uh, which is called VExec. Uh, you may know the name, but it is not uh, from the Linux uh, family. Um, the idea to first be able to split the Linux capabilities, which may be uh, for some of them uh, really um, well not fine grain enough. For example, the Capsys admin can do everything uh, almost. Um, so here we want to kind of cut these capabilities in more um, um, tailored permission. For example, we have a cap uh, permission to enable a process to uh, mount a file system uh, with the Fuse um, uh, subsystem with some constraints. Um, but we also have um, new permission. For example, a process and a clip if this process wants to connect to um, a TCP server or whatever, uh, this process needs to have a special permission. Network access by default is denied. Um, what is also in interesting is that these permissions are tied uh, to specific container, to uh, unique uh, container identifier. Um, we use uh, configuration files to store these this, uh, permissions, so we do not rely on the file system. So here is a simple example of what can look like um, a configuration file. So here it is, uh, well, for the sandbox of Chromium. So you can see the first uh, argument is a path. The second one is a container ID. So we only want we want only this rule to be applied for this container if a process uh, is started with uh, this executable. Uh, so it is an executable binary, so an alpha binary binary. And then here the next three arguments um, set the capabilities which are granted to this process. So we have the effective uh, capabilities, permission capabilities, and inherited capabilities. So because this process is dedicated to Sandbox itself, it needs to be able to change UID, change GID, and shoot itself. We also here have um, the clip specific uh, permission. The first one, the C, is for um, network connection. The second one, U, is for the unshared Cisco. So we want this uh, process to be able to create new namespaces. And the third one is um, the ability to access file descriptors through the PROC file system. And finally, we have a checksum which identifies the content of the file. So let's see how it's, it works. Um, mainly, uh, we have a set of configuration files which are install, installed um, by the, the, our packages, so bundled uh, with our application. Then the VCTL tool can read uh, these configuration files and write them in a specific uh, device uh, called dev very exec. Then this configuration 
is stored in the kernel, which can then um, check if a process, for example here, a web browser, is legitimate to access, well, to connect to a server. And the processes which are not allowed, well, we, uh, which um, do not have this permission, um, cannot connect to anything uh, uh, on the network. So this was a quick recap of what you can find in ClipOS 4. And now let's see what's coming with ClipOS 5. Thanks, Michael. Uh, so now we're going to talk about ClipOS version 5 uh, that we released so a week ago uh, you know, in open source with, along with the version 4.2. Uh, so we made quite a lot of change. We made a few changes to the version 5, the way we handle uh, kernel patches and changes. Um, the first one is we've rebased our kernel upon the, on the latest version, uh, latest stable version. And we started from, from the basics. We did the uh, general Linux kernel hardening. We, 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 cho we chose a, a strict set of options. Uh, but we made sure to make it easily composable for, to support multiple hardware profiles. For example, if you want to work on a laptop and a server, we'll have different drivers. Um, we, yes, we choose to add a, a co um, some, some way to set to enforce some, uh, some paranoid common line arguments. Uh, so you've got like uh, an example about e uh, the IO MMU. So we force the use of IO MMU. Uh, we force the use of uh, page table isolation and spec mitigation, for example. And we uh, also set in user space a few uh, strict societal uh, values uh, for pointers, uh, kernel pointers, etc. So that's like the basics uh, that you can do uh, with uh, any Linux kernel on any mostly uh, any distribution. Uh, but of course, we want to go. We want to go further. So the goal uh, again is to enable Linux kernel hardening. So we want to protect uh, the kernel to protect itself and protect it for, and protect uh, itself from the space too. Uh, so we are going to we are going to add features for the kernel and going to add features also for user space, just like we've seen uh, with version four. Uh, and the, the main thing we have with the ClipOS operating system, the Clip, ClipOS. Uh, is that we control both the user space and kernel space, so we are able to test changes that are modifying, that are impacting both, both sides uh, at the same time. Um, one thing that may be different with the upstream kernel, for example, is that we have a strong goal about security, so we may uh, take changes, we may uh, make changes that will cause, uh, will create minor incompatibilities for user space, but as long as we are able to fix user space, it's fine. Uh, and we may also accept changes in, clip, in ClipOS uh, that uh, may not be in user space uh, for security or for various reasons. Finally, uh, we are not alone, of course. Uh, we know that there are uh, already existing projects in the upstream communities to work on kernel safe protection, for example, like ESPP, and we will interact with upstream. Uh, one of the few ways we will do it, uh, of course, we're open source, and uh, one of the ways we will do it is to take uh, current uh, submitted patches for inclusion in the upstream communities, so either in progress or ready to ready for, for upstream patches and merge them in our kernel. Uh, the goal here is to integrate them to make sure they work well together and to validate the changes. Uh, so we are maintaining a single tree with uh, all those patches merged and we, uh, we will keep it for, for, for latest kernels. We keep it updated for all the latest kernels that we will use in our operating system. So yes, we will maintain those hardening patches. So let's have a look at, at uh, the few pages that we had a look uh, for about a year. We started about a year ago, uh, and uh, that are now merged in, in our current tree. Uh, for the first patch we I want to take a look at is the Linux hardened project. Uh, the main goal of this project is to uh, regroup uh, at set of patches uh, a lot of memory uh, hardening improvement. That, um, it's something like uh, better uh, user space, uh, address space layout randomization, uh, some uh, allocators hardening for the kernel, uh, simple build uh, sanitizing. Uh, and also, it also had uh, a few uh, restrictions 
for uh, TTY access, uh, PEF system, etc. And various mis miscellaneous uh, additions around, uh, especially more uh, more um, read-only structures, uh, more markers for structures in the kernels. So all these page series, uh, we think it's still a work in progress. So the, the development of the page series will, will keep going forward. Uh, we will help. Uh, we will help it, and we, we already. Uh, are inter um, interacting with it. Um, it's currently merged in the ClipOS kernel tree. Uh, and unfortunately, we, we, well, we hope it, it would get a really, it could, it could get a merged upstream, but it isn't actually. And some things uh, most probably won't, won't be merged. Um, so a second patch, that, a second patch series that uh, I want to take a look at is Lockdown. Lockdown, uh, the, main, the main goal of Lockdown is to restrict uh, user space, especially root, from running a trusted code in the Linux kernel. Uh, so it's fairly straightforward in the patch series. Uh, there aren't that many, there, there aren't the really complex uh, changes. Uh, so, well, the, we think the development of, of this patch is fairly, fairly complete. We merged this patch too in our tree. Uh, and we hope that we, it will be integrated in uh, upstream soon. There are plans for it, it has been submitted. Uh, so well, hopefully later soon. Third uh, patch series, uh, third feature is StackLeak. So it's mostly a GCC plugin. Uh, well, it's part of GCC plugin, part change in the kernel um, to avoid to reduce information leaks uh, and block some kind of attacks that use initialized, uninitialized kernel stack variables. Um, so it does it by clearing the stack uh, upon uh, return uh, by, uh, at the end of system calls. Um, and one of the things that was part of the, part of the patch uh, until the just latest uh, version uh, is some improvements to, um, to the so instrumentation uh, added to, to call to LOK uh, to detect uh, kind of stack overflows. So, for example, the stack clash attack, um, and this is typically one of the changes that we we do, you know, in, our, in the way we handle the patches. So, it was dropped those changes for LK were we dropped in the latest version for uh, submitted for upstream, the the v, v version uh, 15. But we've kept them because we think they are interesting. Uh, so, we've kept them in in our in our, in our trash. Uh, so well, again, this for, for us this, this patch uh, this patch series is fairly com feature complete and ready for integration. So we've merged it, and hopefully it will be merged upstream. Uh, another uh, contribution we are looking at is Landlock. So Landlock has been developed uh, by Michael Salan here. Um, the, the main goal of Landlock is to enable uh, easy and privileged. Uh, easy uh, sandboxing features for unprivileged processes. So it's a stackable Linux security module and it uses uh, the EBFF uh, subsystem. Uh, so how, do you, how does it do it? It's like it uses whitelists and blacklists uh, of uh, file system paths to enable simple uh, uh, access control for, for containers, for example, or for, for any application. You can find more information on the, on the website. Uh, and again, um, well, this this patch series uh, we think as uh, the the initial footer set is ready, uh, so you can definitely take a look take a look at it. We haven't yet merged it in Clip OS, but it's planned, and uh, and we're still working uh, on the on the, on the upstreaming uh, status. And finally, uh, if so, if you remember for the version uh, version five. Uh, version four, sorry. We uh, we used to uh, to rely on the vServer patch, uh, Linux vServer patch, and uh, we like some of these ideas from this patch. So we are going to keep it in version five, and um, we redoing uh, we uh, we making a little bit different. Um, the thing uh, the thing we like in it is like we have a single identifier uh, for uh, containers mostly for confined environments. Uh, so in this server, it's called XID. Uh, there was a similar proposal uh, in, in the kernel upstream that has been rejected, unfortunately, about container IDs. Uh, it's the same kind of IDs that we like here for our confined environments. Uh, so we are going to create a new uh, stackable uh, Linux security module uh, with the same ID. Uh, and uh, 
uh, hopefully we will integrate it in, a, in our uh, kernel. So, well, this is still early development stages, but it's really it's planned, and uh, we will add something like this to the, the KeepOS kernel. So that's what uh, that's what we have for the version four and version five of the of the ClipOS operating system, Clip ClipOS. Uh, and um, as a takeaway, so we've released everything at the open source, so it's uh, all still on GitHub, uh, and uh, you can take a look at all those projects, all those changes that we've made either in user space or the kernel. It's all available there. Um, the main takeaway is that we, we this the ClipOS is a harder distro, uh, and we would have a kernel a kernel part and user space part. Uh, we made changes to both, so they have to be uh, they, they have to be able together to, for for it to work. And of course, we we made all those changes to handle the multi security multi level security uh, model that we we need. Um, of course, this is an ongoing project. We're not going to stop here. Uh, it's still in alpha status, but we're working on it. Uh, so, of course, contributions are welcome. Uh, you can browse the docs and the sources uh, on GitHub. The docs are hosted on uh, docs.clip.showes.org. And there are other features, uh, security features, or other interesting features that we don't talk about in this presentation because we don't have much time, but uh, you can find uh, a lot of hair or a lot of the roadmap uh, planning uh, and everything uh, in the documentation. And that's it. Thank you for your time. Uh, so you can find here the website, uh, the email if you want to uh, contact us, the, the, the links for the version 4, version 5 uh, of the ClipOS. Yeah. Um, I have two questions. The first one, did you receive any feedback from your users, whether positive or negative? Uh, for example, uh, did, does it cause some uh, annoyance from day, day to day uh, for their day to day job compared to other operating systems? Or do they find it uh, more stable compared to uh, other systems which tend to break all the time? Uh, so that's the first question, and I will uh, yeah. <laughs> on the second one after. Um, so the, ma the main feedback is the main use case we have is uh, so you have two security level on the same desktop. Mm -hmm. So the main thing that happens is like before you used to have two computers, and now you have only one. So usually people are pleased with uh, with this uh, with this with this when it happens. Uh, and apart from that, uh, we do not have really that much complain about the the layout of the system itself. Uh, it's like so for, for them, it's usable like a regular uh, system. Yeah, we have okay. the, well. The, the system is deployed in a lot of places. We have a lot of people uh, inside the agency using it. So so, so far, we don't, we we use it ourselves. Uh, okay. Uh, and the second question, uh, did you manage to, uh, to detect or to catch some uh, attacks or some malwares uh, now, uh, till now, using it? Because that's uh, often the problem when you try to harden something. You never, do if you, you never know if you harden enough, because when you don't detect anything, you don't know if it's because it's uh, secure by design and uh, everything is stopped very early, or just because you secure too much and maybe sometimes uh, you feel like it's useless, you don't know. That's a hard question. The, the thing we have is like we, we do have means for dating. So you do have logs, for example, the systems. You can, you can get logs from, from the kernels, from various systems and everything. Uh, and they are usable. Uh, I don't know of any attack that has been detected. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I probably wouldn't be able to tell you anyway. It's not a problem. But, uh, in fact, I used to use vServer uh, maybe 15 years ago, and uh, at one point I was wondering if I was not creating too, too much trouble for nothing because uh, I never knew if, uh, if it did bring anything to me. So that's why I was asking the question, and uh, I understand that sometimes you feel like you're causing a lot of trouble uh, to, uh, to have too much security, and you don't know if it's really worth it. So that's why that, that was um, a, the question. I, I think, yeah, mm. uh, I get it. The thing, um, 
I think that's interesting uh, in vServer uh, regarding containers, Linux, classic Linux containers, for example, is that you've got this kind of uh, really easily identifiable, uh, so XID context uh, ID that can match a container or process to. So, um, that's, so the Linux containers are great, the namespaces, the features and everything, it's great, but uh, as, as it says, Linux doesn't do containers, it just does namespaces, C groups and everything. You have to compose everything and you have to make it perfect and you, if you fail, somebody can just uh, work through. Uh, so the thing is, like with VC servers, you don't have a choice. You, once you've built uh, a cage, a VC jail, uh, you're in it, and that's it. And that's the point of the of the system. You, we want to be able to to say that this environment is confined and that nobody can get out. Uh, even if somewhere we make some mistakes, uh, we have the the kernel enforced principle that processing this environment won't talk to anybody outside of it. So that's the main point we get off uh, outside of the server. Uh, in fact, well, with the server. Uh, it's, yeah. Um. Just one, one point, for example. Well, an example is um, thanks to XID, um, um, container identifier. It's quite, well, we know exactly um, which process is in which container, and we can enter exactly this container without uh, forgetting uh, network namespace or whatever. So you know exactly what where you are and where your processes are. So this is really important. And this have also add some um, multiple features which uh, we use. So this is really. Um, consistent way to um, contain processes. Okay. Thank you. Oh yeah, I have a question about uh, the platform security. So you're doing some sort of user space isolation and uh, network isolation, but then you have stuff like management engine running in the background, which has access to all your RAM and it actually has network access. How do you deal with that? I mean, it completely destroys all this stuff you're building, right? Yes, definitely, but we, we have to stop somewhere. We can't do everything, so the goal is to build what we can with what we have and what control we have. Of course, if we could make our own chips, we would, but yeah. we don't really have the time to do it. Okay. Uh, so the thing is, uh, we, we can't build perfect security. We want to build the best, we can, we, best one we can with the tools we have and the, the, the efforts we can put in. So of course, if the management engine is compromised, uh, you, you, you can take down all the, the, the full system. But if you can take down the full system with the management engine, you can take everybody's system down, not just ours. The goal is to, we have a set of, uh, so a set of security hypothesis, and one of them is that we can trust the hardware enough on, on some points, uh, otherwise you just don't build system with Linux or anything, mm. actually. And at least you, you can use a, a, a regular system like you are doing, because in fact, you use a standard laptop, you install your OS, and you have all your tools. Yeah. You don't have to carry a 20 kilogram PC because uh, you built everything yourself and it took edges. <laughs> yeah, this is, so this is a KPOS 4 uh, well, system installed, and it's a, a standard laptop, and so with a mouse and everything. Uh, so that's, that's the point. We, we use something that users want. Uh, we have something like, that looks like uh, what they have, um, maybe not at home, but uh, on, on, easy, on any other Linux distribution. And uh, it's not so esoteric that people don't want to use it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I have a, a question. You said you've been developing this OS for a long time. You started like, five years before Cubes OS. So it means it, it has uh, existed for 11 years, or it has been started 11 years ago. And um, so you've been developing this and even using it uh, in-house for a long time. What, what led to the release uh, a week ago? Why, why now? Since obviously you have the resources to develop it in-house, why now? So yes, so I think um, it's... Uh, Open source is something that has been started uh, in-house uh, in an administration. It's not something you do uh, on a whim. So it took a lot of time, a lot of uh, it's 
process mostly, so you, you, you have to, 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 to do things carefully. Uh, so just like any other uh, software you would have developed in a, in a private company and that you would have to open, to open source. So there are a few um, uh, um, yeah, there was an initiative to, to the open government initiative that was started by the, the DINZEC, the French uh, network, uh, well, the, 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 the French, uh, part of the French government to, to open uh, more uh, work done by uh, administrations uh, of open source. So we, we, we fit right in uh, in this process. Uh, to, to open source uh, the ClipOS. Um, and sorry, I missed the last part of your question. Uh, why now? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Why now? Um, <laughs> why not? <laughs> okay, no, that's a good enough answer. <laughs> um, I don't, well, complimentary one, maybe, it, well, um, it was developed for a long time on um, dedicated in uh, private uh, network and development environment for different pur purposes. Um, so, like say Timothy, it has been uh, not really easy to open source it, but we did it, so it took some time. Um, and the DINZIC um, um, started, um, well, make it kind of easier um, to open source project, and it's kind of a, a start flag for everyone. Um, and also because uh, we are starting a new version of, of ClipOS, so um, I thought it was the right time uh, to just switch it, the development model, uh, to make the version for available uh, for references, and to start with other people, if they want to, uh, to start a new version. Okay, I have one, I have one question the, about the... the sorry, the, just, a, just, just a quick, quick one. I remember the last part of the, what I wanted to say. The thing is, of course, we've open sourced it, but we are not just giving it. We, we plan on working on it. We, if, it's not because we are open source that we, have not, we expect people to do the work first. We will do the work. We will make it work. We have a set of features. Of course, we had the resources to do it uh, till now, so we will continue. We kept doing it. And um, it's obviously not the first open source contribution we do. So um, some parts of Clip have been open source, but not under this umbrella. You're talking about Landlock or, or other initiatives? Time and Crush, uh, other projects of different patches, uh, different Stuff. You can find some on GitHub and some on mailing list. Or... Um, ju just a small question. Uh, you have a lot of um, uh, dedicated development to uh, prevent, uh, I would say, electronic attacks. Do you have, in, have you done any development uh, regarding uh, physical attacks like built-in encryption or I don't know stuffs like that? Or is it irrelevant in this development? So maybe you've heard the Wookie project that was presented uh, just yesterday. Uh, that's another part of the agency that which is working on, on dedicated hardware. We in this project we do only software mostly, and we probably won't do any hardware. I hope that's no, no. Uh, well, what I was meaning is if I'm stealing your laptop now, uh, can I access your document? Uh, no, you can. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. The, one of the things we had in version 5 is complete boot chain integrity and, and protections of the boot partitions. Uh, well, had a and yeah, there's like encrypted data for the system and encrypted data for, the, for your users. So it's similar to the Chrome OS model when you have a system boot partition which is fully encrypted and uh, each user data is encrypted with user password. Or, yeah, yeah, all the means. Why is it called Clip? So, Clip is the historic name of the project. It's just just uh, just the name that was selected at the time. But now the full name of the project is ClipOS. So we do make the mistake sometimes because we used to to call it Clip, but it's ClipOS, the full name. Yeah. Sorry.
I was just interested in this uh, O megzec. Um, wondering how you handle standard in with interpreters. Sorry, I, I missed the last part. I'm wondering how you handle standard input for yeah. interpreters. Um, so we patch uh, script interpreters when they open uh, files, but we also patch script interpreters for other stuff, like, for example, steady in, steady, uh, well, steady in mainly, um, or even uh, module loading or stuff like that. But that's only user land stuff, so that's quite easy. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I mean, I, I could imagine just disabling standard input for the Python interpreter yeah. only scripts, but then we can for Bash. Yeah, obviously you so, want people to be able to type and yeah, right. Um, so in our thread model, um, some um, languages are maybe more useful for an attacker. That's the case for Python, Perl, and so on. Uh, because, for example, you can do, um, well, basically, whatever you want, whatever you could do uh, with a, an ELF binary. But that is not the case with other script languages, for example, uh, Bash. Uh, but as a side note, we do not have a direct Bash. Uh, we have a reduced uh, BuzzyBug shell available to users. Um, well, we allow STDIN to be interpreted because we have um, uh, terminals. But this is accepted because it, for example, it doesn't allow you to do direct syscalls, which may harm the system. So you can automate some stuff, but not too much. Okay, and, and there's no... Uh there's no bash, so you have no bash plugins? We have a busy bug shell. Well, bash too, but it depends of, of the containers and so on. Okay. So you said in V5 you are uh, implementing complete boot chain uh, security. Yeah. And do you have a list, as, you pro as you're providing the OS, do you have a list of um, firmwares or uh, chipsets or manufacturers that can be trusted or that you have uh, extended source code auditing uh, ability as you're from the government? Um, in, in our team, we don't. We don't have a specific list uh, because the goal uh, of this project is not to to certify or validate any uh, any specific firmware or or, uh, or hardware. Uh, this is done by another part of the agency, uh, the, the certification part, uh, certification center. We, we don't handle this. So we, we mostly support uh, any, any system which, which, is, uh, which, is as, which has a UEFI SIG boot and, uh, and a TPM chip. And uh, so if you can change the key, which is now man mandatory on the, on the, on the UEFI firmware, uh, you, you can boot... Uh, you, you can use uh, full, full bootchain integrity. integrity. Okay, and you did also ex uh, expect, uh, if you did uh, extensive tests, like you were at NC, and so the conference about security, so you know uh, uh, there's a lot of examples on how a cold boot or extraction key uh, methods are available. And is uh, Clip, uh, Eclipse OS uh, useful against that? So, um, if, if I understand correctly, you're talking about cold boot attack or attack on the on the yeah. boot in, on the in the firmware. Yeah, any uh, physical attack like. Uh, so that's that's the the line we draw uh, in our threat model. The, the thing is, we do we do everything from uh, up from the point the the firmware has started the the system. So if if you do attacks before it before in the firmware, if you if you uh, have a complete physical access and you, I don't know, you distorted RAM or something like that, we, we don't take that into account. It's not in our threat model. So, of course, you can do this on, on a Clipper system. Uh, well, you can attack us this way, but uh, we, 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 can't, we, can't, we can't protect against it because we, we, we can't do everything at the same time. So, just, just to sum up, ClipOS, ClipOS is really about software. So, we had on the software, and our limit if the hard is the hardware. But we have as a team or for the uh, different 
uh, stuff, we can do uh, some hardware work too. But here we're just talking about clip. Uh, so you mentioned that you're planning to use a BPF-based uh, LSM landlock, but before that you mentioned that uh, the uh, lockdown component is uh, preventing yeah. loading any uh, arbitrary programs into the kernel. So wouldn't uh, BPF be some kind of arbitrary program, and wouldn't you need to uh, disable it with lockdown? So and yes, it, it, the thing is, it, it is uh, actually currently the, um, disabled if you if you use the lockdown patches, for example, of Fedora uh, or maybe Debian. I haven't checked. Uh, you you don't have access to the eBPF system call. Uh, the thing is, uh, the eBPF language and the runtime is not exactly a complete. Uh, 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 I would say it. Uh, you, you don't have access to everything in the kernel. You have, you're, limit, you're limited. You have a limited set of instructions. Uh, it's it's a it's 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 a not very machine, but uh, it's very, well, it's a limited set of instructions. Uh, for the goal is is to keep the, this, this, uh, these features and uh, and use them uh, because of course you you can run any any code, but like limited by the BPF uh, subsystem. Yep. Here. I had three questions, but I will straight stay to with one. Just uh, one follow-up um, for the cold boot attack, which was mentioned. There is already mitigation in the kernels for one year. It has to be enabled, and it needs some user space, which is not developed yet. So maybe NC can work on that. Um, uh, so my first question uh, with V5, it looks like with V4, it looks like you had a complete product. Yeah. Uh, why did you start on V5? Is basically because you wanted to get rid of some patches or something which was difficult to maintain or what was the reasoning? With, uh, the, the thing with V5 is that we, we had an opportunity to to, to redesign some parts of the system. Uh, so of course, the, the, the version 4 uh, dates a while. We, we, we had fairly, well, a lot of changes, a lot of churn. Uh, the thing uh, we, we, most, uh, we most wanted to change was the, part, the, the disk layout, the way we install things on the system, and uh, the way we perform updates. And it's, this is something really hard to do, uh, with something really hard to change without breaking everything. So we decided to, to create a new version, and we took the opportunity to change uh, some things on so the way we interact with the kernel community, as we are now open source. Uh, so we, we will do things differently. We will have uh, upstream patches. We will try to upstream patches. We will try to, we have uh, a public uh, version of the kernel uh, with patches and everything. So. We, we, we took the, the opportunity we had to, to make some changes uh, on, on, on the project, in the project. Okay, and last question, very quick. Um, there is a lot of uh, work done by various distribution, being Fedora, like Team Civil Blue, or Micro OS at SUSE, uh, or uh, OS3. Do you plan to, to look at those uh, technologies and integrate those so that you don't have to develop your own stuff to containerize application and, and basically leverage what's already done by uh, other communities? We, we do. We certainly do look at those. Uh, I, I, I'm, well, uh, on, at the personal level, I worked with, uh, with the Fever Blue project, so I definitely know what they are working on. Uh, the thing is, we have a different set model. Uh, um, Regarding with um, with regard to those distributions, uh, where we we can't have a full root account on the system, uh, whereas if you have a classic Linux distribution, you, you are root, you are full admin. Um, so we won't use uh, most. Well, we won't use OS3, for example. But there's something that this plan is, for example, to use Flatpak. Uh, we use uh, we plan using Flatpak for uh, containerized applications on desktop. In, in environments, so we won't use OS3 because we don't have the same update model, but uh, we'll use Fatback. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>